Hello everyone, welcome back to the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we are working on this piece that's behind me. It is absolutely gorgeous. I love how this one comes out. I don't even want you to see all of it right now because there's so many pretty techniques on this. We actually worked on this live on my page together. I do paint live with you guys every Thursday evening and I try to take a piece and we follow all the steps through. And this is when we did just that. I'm gonna be using Mint by Michelle decoupage papers this week. And this beautiful paper is called Foil Birds. It's got metallic details in it with this soft blue. So I'm also gonna be using Mint by Michelle paint to color match it. We're gonna do a fun gold leafing treatment on the top that came out amazing. It's probably my favorite part of this piece. Um, this piece is full of some good techniques and the overall result is absolutely elegant. I'm thrilled with how it came out. You guys have been so supportive and fun all the way through the process. So I hope you enjoy seeing the shortened version of it now as I put it together in this brief edited tutorial on how to get this look. Let's get started. Here's where I started on this piece and I picked this one up because I love the shape. I usually try to avoid pieces that have been previously painted, but this one had too many pretty details. I was willing to overlook it. The existing paint finish was actually in remarkably good condition. So I gave it a really good cleaning, took all that hardware off to go be cleaned itself. And then I went ahead and put a coat of primer right over the top. This works as long as you don't have a wax finish underneath, but this was sealed in a clear polycrylic. And so I was able to just put my new primer over the top of it. With my primer on, I went ahead and painted around the outside edges of the drawers. You can see that's where the blue is. And that's Mint by Michelle Paint. That color is called My Frenchie Blue. It's a perfect match to the background color in this paper that I'm using. I've been saving this paper for a while. This is a paper from Mint by Michelle also, and this is called Foil Birds. It's absolutely gorgeous. I ended up using about two and a half sheets to do this entire piece. I'm going to start by applying my decoupage paper to this drawer front and I'm applying this using Annie Sloan gloss clear coat. It worked great as a decoupage medium um, and also I don't usually seal in gloss clear coat so this was a great way to make use of some gloss that I had although I did end up figuring out that I love my gloss clear coat over a gold leaf top. We'll see that later. For these curved drawer fronts, I did end up figuring out pretty quickly that it's much easier to apply it side by side and wrap the barrel of this curve than it is to go from top to bottom. It wanted the paper to stretch in an odd way, so definitely going side by side is how I'm going to be doing the rest of this desk. Doing this drawer set was a perfect way to practice that on. So let's get into the details of actually laying this paper. Like I said, I'm using my Annie Sloan Gloss Clear Coat as my adhesive. I have a decoupage tool. I'm using a piece of plastic. This is actually just the plastic packaging that my paper comes in, so I'm making use of everything I have. I also got out a sharp razor knife, a pair of scissors, and a brayer. So let's go ahead and do this front drawer next. I did roughly cut my paper to about the size of my drawer so that I don't have a bunch of excess paper that's hanging off the bottom. It doesn't have to be an exact cut, but just getting rid of that excess paper, it lets me save it for another project without it getting damaged. And then I've got a smaller piece of paper to work with on the area I actually need it in. With this paper, when I laid the first piece, I learned pretty quickly that you want to rub it as minimally as possible. So I'm trying to keep my fingers off the front of this paper. Using that piece of plastic in between as a barrier really helps, um, but I'm just going to rub it as minimally as possible to work it across the front of this drawer. I started out by applying my clear coat just to one edge of my drawer, and then I'm going to slowly apply my paper, working it from left to right. I add a little bit of clear coat underneath as I go. And then once I've got that entire piece on, I'm gonna take that piece of plastic and my brayer and I'm gonna seat that paper really well. This is going to work any air bubbles towards the outer edges of the paper. It's going to seat the paper into that clear coat. I like using clear coat as my medium when I'm laying thinner paper. So like tissue papers or this decoupage paper is a good example of a thinner paper. If I'm laying thicker papers, I'll either choose a wallpaper paste or decoupage gel, a thicker type of medium for a thicker type of paper. It's meant for hanging those heavier papers. Once I've got this entire paper seated across the front, I've rolled it out with my brayer and the plastic. I'm gonna go ahead and put a layer of clear coat over the top. Again, I wanna be really careful on this paper that I'm not over rubbing it. So I'm just gonna do a single pass with my brush and try to not over brush the paper as well. I noticed on this paper that the blue tends to be really sensitive and it will start taking off the color on that if you do rub it too much. And that's just a result of this printing process on this paper because it has those beautiful metallic details. You want to be extra careful with it. That's not something that you'd normally experience, but it is a great tip on this particular paper. 
okay, with my front drawers, I'm going to tackle a full side of this desk. And I wanted to start on the smaller drawers to get my technique down and what I needed to do before I went on to this huge side. On this side, I did ask for a second set of hands just to hold that extra edge of my paper up because this is such a long piece of paper. You notice on the drawers, I was able to cut them down to size and just lay that small piece of paper, but this has a really large side that's kind of hanging up. And so it was really helpful to have a second set of hands. I start off by applying my clear coat just to a small edge at a time. At first, I just do enough just to tack the paper up and kind of hold it for me. And then I'm gonna apply it slowly as I go. I put my next level of clear coat on and then I'm going to come back with that plastic and the brayer and I'm actually going to roll the paper into the clear coat as I go because coming back and trying to get any bubbles out of such a large piece like this would be near impossible. I did lightly dampen the paper to add a little bit of stretch to the paper and this makes the paper extra fragile. That's another reason I wanted to have an extra set of hands holding it because if it was just hanging, it would have a likelihood to tear. Um, so I did lightly wet it just with a mister bottle to give a little bit of that flex to the paper. Here it is from a different angle. You can see me working from behind it. I'm applying, oh, this is probably about 12 inches of clear coat at a time. The little bit of Mr. Bottle to the back side of the paper so that it adds that little bit of stretch to it. And then coming back with my brayer and that plastic and just laying it around the barrel roll of this desk. I just did the same process slowly working my way around. I didn't make any cuts at this point. I'm not gonna trim the excess paper until I get to the end. This blue decoupage tool that I'm using, I also use in conjunction with the brayer, and this has a felt end on it. It's a plastic tool that's usually used for laying window tinting, um, but I'm able to use it for this decoupage. It works great. I have about uh, five of these in my stash. I just picked these up off Amazon. Mint by Michelle also carries these now because they are a lifesaver when you're laying decoupage paper. I won't trim any of this paper until it's actually dry because this paper is so fragile and because I've wet it and now it's been exposed to the clear coat too. I don't want to try to trim it when it's wet because it will have a tendency to tear. Once it's dry, I'll come back with a sanding block and I can lightly sand any areas that have excess paper or I can also take my razor knife and trim any edges that I need to at the very end when it's dry. I'm coming up to the back side of this and the one area I do need to put a cut on is to get around this little piece of trim that's part of the um, desk construction. So I'm just going to use my razor knife and ever so gently just cut myself a little slot so that I can make this paper conform to that trim. With my paper wrapping my desk, it looks absolutely gorgeous, but it's time to pay attention to some other details on this piece. With the gold in my paper, of course I want to go ahead and introduce some gold details. This piece has beautiful curvy legs that I want to go ahead and introduce a gold treatment to. So I'm going to use spray paint and as I'm spraying it, I'm going to pull my can away with a lighter, app lighter application as I go up and I'm also going to let up on my trigger a little bit. And this is going to create a sort of sputtering effect as I work my way up these legs. It ends up looking like gold dust. Spray paint can be a really fun tool to play around with. I also cleaned the hardware really well, but it's got a lot of discoloration, so I'm going to spray that in gold. This top really tripped me up and I wasn't sure what to do with it for the longest time, so I just kind of left it sitting. I had stripped this top back to the raw wood, but when I got to the raw wood, I found out it had a lot of discoloration to it. So I wasn't going to be able to leave it in the wood and I needed to decide what to do with it. So I'm going to make that gold as well, but it's not going to stay in this painted gold. I have a treatment we're going to be doing to the top. So I'm just giving this a base coat of a spray paint in gold over the smoothed wood. With my smooth coat of my gold on the top, I decided that I loved the color, but I want to add a little bit more to it. So let's see what I'm going to do to this top. We're going to, I'm going to show you using this small piece of the drawer front just as a sample board. Once my gold spray paint is nice and dry, this is just going to serve as a base to cover up that wood color. And then I came back and I applied a coat of spray adhesive and I did do a pretty ample coat. This is 3M Super 77 spray adhesive. And then I'm going to be applying gold leafing. So one of my pet peeves about gold leafing is I don't like when you can see the perfect 90 degree corners lining up on gold leafing. And so I tried to lay this in kind of a sporadic pattern so that those seams would not show as visibly. I fully wrap this entire top just like I'm doing this little sample section here. I placed sheets of gold leafing until I had it completely covered. I also needed to make sure that I wrapped the front and the sides in this gold leafing as well. So whenever I needed to, I just cut my sheets into smaller bits so that I could use them on edges. This is just imitation gold leafing. Of course, it's not the real 24 karat stuff. And this is from Redesign with Prima. They have beautiful gold leafing. 
I lay the sheets using the bit of parchment that comes in between each sheet of the gold leafing. I try to touch it as minimally as possible because the oils from your hands can actually tarnish the metal in the leafing. Once I've got my piece entirely covered, I'm going to come back and brush away the excess leafing. And I started out with a really soft brush, but that wasn't quite removing as much as I wanted to. So I stepped it up to a brush with a little bit more texture to it. The brush that I'm using for this ended up being pretty important to the final finish. So I started out using a stippling motion and that was pushing the gold leafing into the wood grain texture. I actually wanna give a little bit of texture to this finish. You'll notice as I'm holding the top of this desk up that with the high shine of that gold leaf, it's actually kind of hard to look at. So it, was, it would have been hard to work on the top of this desk with the really high reflectivity of the gold leafing. So I'm gonna dull that down a little bit. I came back with a natural bristle brush and I'm using that to mark the gold leafing. You can see that by using the coarse bristles of the natural bristle brush, I'm starting to sort of score the top of this gold leafing and it's dulling that finish down to sort of a brushed metal look. And then I came back with one of the polishing pads from Redesign with Prima. This is an abrasive pad and I'm just using it to create a sort of swirling pattern in the gold leafing. This is giving it that sort of aged look. And then because I have that gold spray paint underneath, if it ends up going through the gold, it shows the, the contrasting tones of gold. It actually ended up being really, really pretty. The next thing I'm gonna do is apply a coat of glaze. This is Wise Owl Glaze and I'm gonna brush it on and then I'm gonna wipe it back. But I want this glaze to get into all those marks that I just made with the brushes and the polishing pads, anywhere that it got into the wood grain. It starts aging this gold leafing and it had the most beautiful finish. This added so much character to the top of this desk. It had great texture. It was reflective. It was absolutely gorgeous. It ended up being this sort of antique gold finish. You can see it here as I pan over the top of this desk. The last thing I did was coat this in three coats of Annie Sloan gloss clear coat to keep it good and protected. I cast some molds using Amazing Casting Resin and Redesign with Prima Molds, and I'm just gonna add them to the sides of this desk. I just felt like it would add an extra detail to the sides to make it more interesting. I did spray paint these in gold as well, and while they're nice and fresh, they bend to the curvature of this desk. I'm just using Tight Bond Quick and Thick Adhesive to apply them. I'm gonna press them into place and then use an artist brush to remove any excess glue that might've come out. This glue does dry clear, so a little bit is okay, but of course I don't want bubbles of glue coming out around the edges of my mold. So of course I'm not done with gold leafing on this piece. I've gotta add some more. So I'm gonna add some to some of the natural appliques that were already part of this furniture piece. To apply the gold leafing, I start out by applying Redesign with Prima Gilding Glue over the top of the moldings, and then I'm gonna let this dry until it's translucent. So it starts out in sort of a white gel. Once it turns translucent, it should be just a tacky surface that it leaves behind. It takes about 10 minutes or so to let the glue fully dry. You don't need to put it on too thick, just a thin layer is all you need. And once I've got that nice and tacky, I can come back and put a sheet of my gold leafing over top. I'm gonna press it in place just using that soft brush again, and then I can brush away the excess and it's gonna leave the gold leafing over the top of this molding. With my gold leafing applied, I wanna match it to the tone of the gold leafing that I put on the top of this desk. And so I'm gonna use glaze over the top of this leafing as well. It's gonna get into all the details of that molding and really start bringing those out. It also turns it into this sort of antique gold, which I found match the gold tones that are in the paper. I apply my glazing. I'm gonna work it into the details of this molding and then come back and wipe it away using a dry rag. With all my gold details done, my hardware, I've got some molds that I made, and then of course my appliques have their gold leafing on them. I'm ready to go ahead and put some clear coat over the body of this piece. I did spray this in a satin varnish and it's got a nice low sheen on it. My top is gonna have that gloss clear coat on it, so it's gonna be a little bit higher sheen, but I wanted a lower sheen on the body. It is staging day, you guys, and here is the finished piece. I just brought out a little vanity seat that's in my stash for staging um, and a mirror that I used over the top of it. The colors on this are absolutely gorgeous. There's a variety of different golds in this piece. We use the gold spray paint, the gold leafing, and of course the gold that's in my paper, but they all tie together really, really well. I just put my original hardware back on and this piece is complete. As always, you can find links for everything I use in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube, and on my website at brushbybrandy.com. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, please click that subscribe button for weekly painting here at Brush by Brandy on YouTube.